about buying a fixer-upper uh, in the Dominican Republic. And I think it's some good um, tips that I think are very valuable for us to think about if, in fact, we are um, in that process of, of even thinking about buying a fixer-upper uh, in the Dominican Republic. Now, you know there's so many options out there. You know you can buy um, new construction. You can buy on pre-construction or on blueprints. Um, you can buy an existing uh, condominium or a villa or a home or house. Um, and for some of you, you may think that this may be the uh, better way uh, for you to invest your money. Or perhaps maybe it's a more affordable way for you if you run the numbers and, and have done all your calculations. But today, in this video, I just want to talk about buying a fixer-upper in the Dominican Republic and the five common mistakes that people can quickly make when they're looking at a fixer-upper. Now, if you spend any time in the Dominican Republic going around looking at various properties, uh, and perhaps properties that you think that if you were to purchase, you're going to uh, put some money into it and to quote unquote fix it up. And, um, and th again, that is a great idea, uh, but you're gonna have to carefully, carefully outline your budget uh, for what you're going to quote fix up. Uh, making sure that you don't overspend. So quickly, very quickly, I want to just talk about just five mistakes that um, I have seen and heard that people are making when they're out here um, in the streets, if you will, uh, looking to buy a fixer up. The first one is, is that they tend to pay too much. They tend to pay too much. And again, uh, I've talked about this before. There is no multiple listing service on MLS in the Dominican Republic. So it's very hard in, in many aspects, especially if you're doing it on your own, to get comps on a piece of property uh, that you're looking to buy. And again, so you're going to have to work with someone who is knowledgeable, um, who is resourceful in knowing what a property's value is. Um, making sure that just because you think it's in a good location, just because you think it's a good deal, um, it very well may not be. And so you're going to have to work with somebody to help you understand what that cost is so that you do not pay too much. Paying too much and then trying to uh, put money into the property and quote unquote fix it up may ultimately price you out of the market in the long run if you're trying to sell and get your money back. So the first thing is don't pay too much. Do your due diligence. Find out how much is that property actually worth. How much are you actually willing to offer and pay uh, for that property? The second thing, and it's very clear, as you go around uh, the Dominican Republic and throughout the city, you will see some fixer-ups uh, that are taking place, or even in some cases, some construction projects that have been started, but for whatever reason, have halted and have ceased uh, that building process or that remodeling process for quite a period of time. And part of the reason for that, number two, is they over, or I should say they underestimated how much blood, sweat, and tears that they were willing to personally invest in that property and fixing it up. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some um, uh, some work. It's going to take some money, obviously. And if you don't really calculate the costs, if you don't really calculate the time and the effort uh, that is put into it, you may find yourself ending up into uh, you know rough waters and no. Um, so I should say into trouble uh, ultimately with that. Number three, don't expect smooth sailing. Just because you see the property and you think, oh, okay, I only need to do this, that, or the other thing, don't expect it to go smoothly. There are processes that have to take place in the Dominican Republic. Materials cost money. The prices of materials are going up. Uh, contractors are sometimes difficult to work with if you don't find the right ones, they come up, they change, they disappear, whatever the case may be. Um, you're going to have to think about and be prepared for contingencies that may help, or I should say, that may pop up uh, in the process of you trying to do your uh, fixing up of that particular property. The fourth thing I would say is this, don't be chintzy and don't skip out on some of the things that you really should do uh, in the process of fixing up your home. 
Well, what do I mean by this? What I'm trying to say is this, do a home inspection. Get somebody to come in and try to give you a thorough uh, inspection of the home, letting you know what problems that he or she sees from a professional point of view, um, what he or she sees from an engineering or technical uh, point of view in the home to give you um, a better understanding of what you might want to address, some issues or problems that the home may have or the property may have so that you can uh, perhaps um, you know, address those and fix them up. But a lot of people say, well, this costs extra money, and it does cost a little extra money. But in the long run, the information that you're getting may help you get to the point where your particular property is now a more valuable property than when you bought it, simply because you took the time to fix it up according to what the inspection reports uh, showed first. And lastly is this, and fifthly, don't forget to get estimates from multiple contractors who are going to do your work. I know sometimes it's very easy to get frustrated and get tired of looking, uh, but it's something that you have to do and get estimates. And it's a, it's a, it, it can be a tiring and a, and a process that you know takes some time. So you're going to have to be patient, as I said before. But you gotta find different contractors who have references, um, who can give you references, who can show you work that they've done. In addition, you want to make sure that they're uh, keeping to the budget that you have and the price that they agree to. Using the materials and the, infra, uh, the the materials that you have decided upon with them, the appliances or whatever the case may be that you have chosen along with them, and that they're using it. And so these are just five quick tips, very basic tips that I think uh, one must consider when buying a fixer-upper uh, in the Dominican Republic. Um, they are available. If you're interested in information on where you might find one, get a hold of me either through the comment box or through the email in the description box below of this video. For me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.